Hey everyone, Brody here with our new channel, Let's Table It. I have a prototype copy here of The Feds. It's an area majority hand management game designed by Stephen Finn and published by Dr. Finn's Games. Today I am going to do a how to play video for this game. To begin, place the four locations out in a column in alphabetical order. This will be following the club, the docks, the restaurant, and then the warehouse. All criminals are placed in the bag and eight are randomly drawn out and placed onto each location. Each player starts with seven agent cards in their chosen color and one office board. Each time you play the game, a different city can be chosen that will change some of the rules in the game. We decided to pick Chicago because it's the closest location to us. We were hoping there would be a North Platte, Nebraska, or even like a Denver, but you know, Chicago will have to do. The remaining cities can be returned to the box as they won't be used in the game. The location card will explain how to place the utility tokens. Many of the locations, including the Chicago one, will have you randomly place out one of the utility tokens on each location. And at the end of the game, the player with the most strength at that location wins the token and scores its value in points. The die and the stop tokens are placed near the side and a player is chosen to be the starting player by any agreed upon method. The player starts then with the FBI badge. The chief of the Capital City Police Department has asked you and your fellow FBI agents to gather intel, infiltrate different mobs, and arrest wanted criminals. Players take turns deploying agents to locations and performing special actions. At the game end, after deploying all your seven cards, players arrest criminals and score points. The player then with the most points wins the game. Again, the game lasts seven rounds and each round has four steps. The first step happens simultaneously between all players and all players will choose one of their agent cards in their hand to play. After each player chooses a card, on the count of three, everyone places their chosen card face down onto one of the four corners of their office board. These locations correspond to the locations that are placed down in front of everyone. This location indicates where the agent will be deployed in the next step, which takes place next. In turn order, starting with the player with the FBI badge and moving in a clockwise direction, each player takes a turn by deploying their agent and then activating the special agent that's moved to the field. So first, the first player will place their card they chose and they will move it from their office board into the hideout area of their chosen location. And this is the hideout area here. At the beginning of the game, these locations are empty and you will place your card face down as a mole in the, your chosen location. Now, later in the game, if a location already has a mole or a card there already, you will turn the mole face up and move it to the field area. This area to the right of the location is known as the field and agents in this area are known as field agents. Cards in the field are placed in an overlapping row with the most recent moved card known as the rookie furthest away from the location. The numbers should always be visible for everyone to see. When moving the mole over to the field, if it is a special agent, those are the cards with an icon below its number, then the owning player of that agent may activate that agent. This happens immediately and only can be activated once. Their special action is either infiltrate, redeploy, or patrol. And these actions are different depending on what city card you have for your game. Again, we have Chicago here. So if the infiltrate special agent has been moved to the field, then that player who controls that agent can then pick a random card from the next player's hand and place it face down to the side of their office. Now, this card must be played next round and this can possibly crush their plan and their strategy. Redeploy lets you swap any two rookies. Remember, those are the rightmost agents in each of the fields. You will swap two of them to help increase your strength or decrease another player's strength in a certain location. And swap any two utility tokens as well. This can help place tokens with a higher value in a location where you are leading. All locations on a card are optional unless the city card specifies otherwise. Remember, the player currently taking their turn is often not the player activating the agent, though it might be. And the only time a special agent is activated is when it is revealed and moved from the hideout to the field. 
due to the city cards. Some actions may be lost. See the back side of the city cards for more details about that. Sometimes players can lose track of turn order during this step. To determine whose turn it is, look at the player's offices and see who still has an agent card on one of the corners. The player with an agent card on their office who is closest clockwise to the player with the badge is the next player to take their turn. Players continue taking their turns and after all players take their turns, if a field has seven or more agent cards in it, then that location is closed and you can place a stop sign next to its row of field agents. If a location is closed, you are not allowed to choose that location when choosing which edge of your office board that you want to place your chosen card. Also, as a result of a special agent action, a closed location may be reopened. If this happens, just return the stop sign to the supply. After all players have placed their card for the round, the first player will then pass their badge clockwise and start a new round. After seven rounds have been played, at which no one has any more cards in their hand, then players will start arresting criminals. Players will flip their office boards over to the jail side, and then it's time to bust into each location and arrest some criminals. This happens from the top location to the bottom, and happens one location at a time. First, you will flip the mole at that location and move it to the field. Each player then calculates their total strength by adding up all the numbers on their agent cards. A player with no agent cards in a location will make no arrests there. In case of a tie, the player with an agent card closer to the location or the player who first played a card in a location is considered to be of higher strength. Now players will take in order from the highest strength to the lowest, they will choose all criminals of one color. If there are leftover criminals, you will then continue again with the player with the highest strength going again and so on. Players continue taking criminals in order of strength until all criminals at that location are arrested. The arrested criminals are placed in the jail spaces of their matching color from left to right on the player's boards. The gray criminals are placed to the side until all locations have had all their criminals arrested and when final scoring occurs. For many city cards, including Chicago that we are using for this, the player with the most strength in each location takes the utility token to score its points at the end of the game. All locations will follow these steps, and after players have all the criminals in one of the jails, the gray criminals are then placed as any color. They are essentially wilds. You will want to place it so that the points generated for your chosen color is the highest, and this would be the row that reaches furthest to the right. Then, for each color, the total points are scored from the number shown above the furthest right criminal in that row. Each player then adds up their score from each row adds the value of their utility tokens and the player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, the player who has the highest valued utility token wins the game. If still a tie, the player with the most criminals in their jail wins the game. And if a tie, players will share the victory. Now, if you are interested in playing the Fed's two players, there are some changes. There is an imaginary third player named the officer who takes turns with you. This imaginary player will have their own set of cards shuffled up and placed out face down. The police car is placed on the club to start and it will indicate that player's location. During the game, the officer will deploy agents but will not perform any special actions. The officer will only take a turn during step two after both players have taken their turns. This is done by drawing the top card of the officer's deck, flip it over face up to see the strength. The police car is then moved the number of locations uh, equal to the number of the strength on that revealed card. When the police car reaches the warehouse, it will then move back up to the top location, the club, and continue moving if needed. So the police car moves from location to from top to bottom, and when it gets to the bottom, it'll go back to the top. Their card is placed face up in the hideout at the location where the police car stops. If there is a mole there, then it will be moved as usual, and the officer's card is placed face up. Even though it's face up, it is still considered a mole. When an officer's mole is moved to the field, it will just be kept face up and no special powers will ever be performed for the officer. When arresting criminals, the officer will always choose to take criminals in the color order from bottom to top of their jail and will take gray last. 
The officer's score is never calculated, so the arrested criminals may just be returned to the box. That's the two-player variant. Same thing, just a little bit of different rules. Also, it's worth mentioning again that the city cards will change the game up and what special actions that you will have and do and how the utility tokens are used in the game. There's an official New Orleans variant that you can add to your games unless you're playing the New Orleans city card. But at the beginning of the game, one random siren token is placed on each location. And during step two, when performing actions, if a redeploy action agent is activated, the owning player may swap any two of the siren tokens. After step two, if a location has a number of field agents equal to or higher than the number on the siren token in that location, then a mini bust occurs. The player with the most strength arrests any two different criminals, and the second most arrests one criminal. Ties are broken as normal. After a mini bust, you will then remove the siren token. And well, that's the feds. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will do my best to be able to answer them. Again, it's Brody with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We are new and working hard to bring to you videos like this one so that you can know if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table.